G'day, welcome to Barney's Daily Devotionals. I'm Joe. We're talking about the gathering of God's people. We've seen what that's about, how God describes it, a body, a field, a building, a temple, and all these things which give us uh, an idea of what we are to be together and what is what it means to be God's church. It's a kingdom of priests. And we've been thinking through then the purpose of gathering. If primarily church is a gathering, a gathering of God's people, why do we gather? We gather to encourage each other. And we saw yesterday a key part of that is in teaching as we are taught from the front, but also as we teach one another, as we sing to each other, as we talk about our faith and the implications of what we've heard, as we speak together after church. It's all part of this teaching of one another to encourage each other to keep going, to love God, to keep serving him, to spur each other on to love and good deeds, as we heard uh, from Hebrews chapter 10. Today, I want to think about a second aspect of our gathering, which is it's kind of hard to explain in terms of a key activity. But let's uh, pray and we'll get into it and we'll see what God's got to say to us about this vital part of God's gathering. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, as we think today about uh, the fellowship that we have, that you might teach us and help us to understand that's why we gather. Uh, and a key part of it that glorifies you and helps each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to read from Acts chapter 2 and verse uh, 42. The context is that uh, Jesus has ascended from the, uh, the grave and he's given instructions to his apostles about what to do they're to wait in jerusalem until the holy spirit comes they've waited the holy spirit's come and peter's given the first amazing sermon in the gathered church and it's a ripper and three thousand people come to christ and they're all baptized uh they must have filled every water hole and bath in jerusalem that day uh but we get to the end of that section and he's he's the people who appears to the heart who've been who've come to faith and they're starting to gather as church what do they do acts chapter 2 and verse 42 they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles now all the believers were together and held all things in common they sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple. They broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here's this wonderful picture of the gathering of God's people. And they gather for these four particular things. And uh, it'd be easy to translate into what we do in church if they could all be described as uh, clear activities that we just engage in. But actually they're all broader than we think. They devote themselves to the apostles teaching. And that, as we saw yesterday, teaching is more than just the apostles doing the talk. They certainly did that. Uh, and we reflect that as we have leaders, teachers, those qualified, handling the word of God, doing that. But we've seen also that, that devoting yourself to the apostles' teaching is, is in part what we do for each other as we c- encourage and spur one another on to remind each other the great truths, to keep looking at the scriptures. And so it's a, min- a ministry that we all exercise to one another, this teaching ministry uh, and and so it comes from leaders but also comes from everyone as we teach as we sing and so on but the second thing that's in this passage here is they devote themselves to the apostles teaching but also to the fellowship how is it you devote yourself to the fellowship it's not an activity so much uh, as uh, uh, a way of understanding why you're together uh, the word fellowship uh, comes from the Greek word koinonia And uh, perhaps a better translation than fellowship, because fellowship's got all these kind of connotations about youth fellowship, about playing fun games, uh, about, you know, we have the church time and then we have the fellowship time, but that's, no, they actually gather, all of the church time is meant to be the fellowship time. Uh, A better word, perhaps, is partnership. 
They came together to exercise their partnership in the Lord Jesus. Fellowship, that's what it, it means. Koinonia is about their partnership. And you see that in lots of different ways in this passage and as we go through the New Testament. What does this Koinonia fellowship partnership look like? Well, first of all, as we're told, and it's not translated in the same way, but in verse 42, all the believers were together and held all things in common, as actually is they held all things in koinonia, in partnership. Uh, it's not that they were communists and it was part of the rule of the, the church government they had to do this. No, 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 they treated each other as as family, as we've looked at. We're all part of the same body, we're all part of the same. So when they thought about their possessions, their houses and so on, they thought, no, this is, this is stuff that God's given me to share. And it could be in all sorts of different ways. You can see that they shared their homes by people coming to visit them every day. They devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple, but also they broke bread from house to house. We'll get to breaking of bread uh, tomorrow. But uh, they, 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 they were in each other's lives. They were partners with each other in the gospel. They'd been so overwhelmed by the Lord Jesus, so encouraged by the apostles' teaching that they wanted to express their unity, their partnership in all sorts of different ways in how they shared. We see later in the book of Acts how that even panned out that they would sell spare properties in order to create a fund in order to care for the the widows and orphans among them, particularly the widows in the early days. Uh, and uh, th th that's their Barnabas, who St. Barnabas and Barney's Daily Elevations was named after, uh, is um, uh, famous for selling a field uh, and giving it and laying at the apostles' feet. And actually they, they saw that as a great encouragement. His name means son of encouragement. And they brought him on as um, part of the apostolic band in one sense. And so Paul and Barnabas would tour together with the gospel uh, sent by the church uh, because he's a great example of fellowship, of partnership. Uh, you can see that that partnership plays out in the book of Philippians. Paul, at the start of the letter, says, I pray and thank God every day for you because of your partnership, your koinonia, your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. How is that exercised? Well, it's exercised this fellowship, this partnership, as they preach boldly the gospel in their own context. Paul's in jail, but they've been emboldened to preach all the more boldly. It's uh, expressed in their unity as a church that they will stand together with each other in the face of opposition. And they will, uh, the, in their meetings, they're going to encourage one another to, to face the realities and to say, how are we going to tackle this situation or that? But it's also a partnership that's exercised financially. You can see that in Acts as they have everything in common, as they sell possessions, as people have need. But also in Philippians, he says, I thank you for the partnership in the gospel from the first day now. And it's not until chapter four, you find out what their partnership with Paul is in his gospel ministry. They have been sending uh, money to the apostle to so that ministry might be exercised. And so part of our partnership is when we, uh, we sponsor each other, but also our missionaries and so on. We're standing together as one as we share our lives, our hearts, our homes, our finances uh, in order to keep other people in the faith and also promote the glory of the Lord Jesus and people coming to know the Lord through uh, gospel going out in our local area and further afield. And so this partnership really is uh, such an important part of church life. It's, it's here is the second thing they devoted themselves to. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the fellowship. And so they came together thinking, I'm in it with these people. These are my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is God's church. How can I be a physical benefit to them, emotional benefit to them, uh, financial benefit to them, spiritual benefit to them. And so they came through the teachings, they devoted themselves to listening and growing, but also in sharing and, in, and building each other, but also as they devote themselves to meeting each other's physical, spiritual, financial, emotional needs. Uh, this partnership was exercised within the congregation, but also that partnership ex will extend out eventually. So how is it that when you come together for church you're thinking about how can I fellowship with these people it's not about playing the games on Friday night at youth fellowship although that can be a form of fellowship it's not just the tea and coffee time it actually it's the part of the purpose of our gathering 
that we might be one together to stand firm together to help each other Col uh, Gal Galatians chapter 6 will put it in terms of bearing each other's burdens uh, how is it that we can be doing that and so that is the fellowship that church uh, when it's going well is really doing it's focusing on so let's devote ourselves in at Barney's but at every church whichever church you're part of in listening to this to this devoting ourselves to the fellowship to being partners with each other partners with Christ himself in his gospel and partners with his church you can't have that partnership alone outside and that is why we gather we gather for the apostles teaching to remind and grow and and to teach each other but also to be devoted to this fellowship let's pray that God would enable us to do that father we thank you that we see in the example of the early church but also in the teaching of scripture why is so vital about church and why we gather and so as we do gather, we pray that there will really be this fellowship, this partnership in the gospel, this looking to each other's interests, to bear each other's burdens, to meet each other's needs, physical, emotional, financial, um, spiritual, and to be there with one another, doing life together. We thank you for the expression that we have in our church buildings, but also the, the way that's expressed when we gather in people's homes and we're in it together. We thank you for the partnership that we have with missionaries in their service. And we pray, please, that you give us a heart to keep being in partnership with them. We pray for the missionaries that are linked to St. Barnabas, for Amy Stevens in Argentina, that you'll bless her ministry as she meets with university students and shares the gospel. We pray that many will come out of darkness into your wonderful light. And please strengthen her for her work. And we thank you for the many, many groups on campus that she's leading and part of and helped set up in the past that are going well. We pray for Lewis Jones in his work around the universities of Australia with the academics and the postgraduates and the staff of the unis. We thank you for the many uh, academics in this country who do know the Lord Jesus. And we pray that as he helps them and sharpens them up for their, to, to exercise a Christian ministry within their professional fields, uh, that you will bless his work. Thank you for uh, the way that uh, some have even decided to go to the um, uh, closed countries with the gospel through being academics. And we pray that you'll bless them and that you'll open up many hearts to the Lord Jesus and many doors for that to happen in the future. And we pray for uh, Matt Bales and his work amongst uh, Muslims and as he leads Hindus and Muslims to Christ in southwest Sydney. We pray that you'll bless him and give him the joy of seeing many come to Christ. We pray for the church that he leads as it meets that uh, you would encourage them and help them to be in it together, have this partnership with him and with each other. And as new members are added in from all sorts of different faith backgrounds, and uh, we pray that that would add to their joy and not to confusion, break down any barriers of distrust from the past. We know that the gospel breaks those barriers. And so help him to manage all of that, give him courage and strength and perseverance in that ministry. And we thank you for Peter and Terry Blouse back home on holidays uh, from Argentina as well. We pray that you give them good rest. And uh, yeah, please sustain them and help us in our partnership with them to keep loving them and caring for them, praying for them as we pray and care and love each other as well in partnership. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.